Welcome back to Simply Money. Are you ready to skyrocket your YouTube channel from zero subscribers to over 30,000 subscribers in just six weeks? Join me as I share how I accomplish this milestone. Stay tuned to the end where I share the number one method I use to achieve this accomplishment. First and foremost is to know your audience. And if you listen right, I said from zero subscribers to over 30,000 subscribers. I've seen some videos where they talk about I increased X number over this period of time, but going from zero to 30,000, I did not have an audience. I had to learn my audience as I went. So the first thing I did was identify who I thought my target audience would be based on my subject matter. And then as I created videos and watched the videos and I learned the demographics of the age, the gender, the geographical location, and watched the other things they watched to see what their interests were, I began learning who my audience was. See, starting a YouTube channel isn't just about getting on camera and beginning to video yourself talking about something. That's the creative portion. There's a lot that goes into it. I believe to truly be successful on YouTube, you have to deep dive the analytics, the data on the back end. YouTube is wonderful. The YouTube studio provides you all sorts of data information. If you like data and you can make creative videos, you can have a good time doing YouTube. I enjoy after the video production, watching the data, analyzing the data, because I'm a data analyst at heart. You don't have to necessarily be a data analyst, but it does provide good insight on learning who your audience is, seeing what else they watch, seeing which one of your videos they watch the longest, seeing what thumbnail they click on the most, what title they enjoy the most, that's where you're looking and learning your audience. See, I didn't have an audience to go to and try a video and see if it worked. I began doing videos and I made improvements along the way. So I learned my audience along the way and I'm still learning my audience as it grows and develops and becomes more engaged. So number one, learn your audience. Secondly, I had to learn what was my high performing content. And again, when I began this, I had no content. And I debated about doing this for quite some time. And then finally I said, you know what? Just do it. Just get in there, make a video, no matter how unedited it is, no matter how rough it is, just start. Build momentum. And that's exactly what I did. I began watching the video and making improvements. I asked friends and family to give me insights on how I can improve things. What did they like? What did they not like? And I was open to that. Take those lessons and make improvements. And as you build content, as you continue to put content on, you'll learn more and more what your audience likes and not just what your friends and family like. And that's okay. As your audience grows, as you get more subscribers, as you get more engagement, you'll begin to see what they like. You'll begin to see what the general population likes by thumbnails. I can tell you right now, I could go on my analytics and I can look and I can show you the number one thumbnail that has gotten the best click-through rate because it attracts people. But I have a second one. The thumbnail is great, but the content's not holding their attention. So I need to make improvements. The thumbnail, the title was good. It was aligned to the topic. It wasn't clickbait, but the topic and the presentation just wasn't hooking and holding people's attention. You have to hook people. We're emotional creatures. It's okay when you create your videos to do things that hook people to want to watch. That's the whole reason you're on here. Hooking people with emotion, excitement, wonder, curiosity. Those are things that get people wanting to come back and watch. Did you notice? I shared that I'm going to share my number one secret at the end of the video. That's strategic. It's okay. You can skip forward if you want. I believe the content from here to there is wonderful. But if you want the most vital, the most impactful tip, you're going to watch all the way to the end. And if not, that's okay. There's nothing forcing people to do it. I'm not tricking them. I was up front. I'm going to share this at the end. But that's a hook that helps people understand. If you want to be a creator on YouTube, you have to be willing to learn how to engage people emotions. And some people will think, oh, that's tricky. That No, we do that all the time. We, as teachers, education, are constantly improving the craft of how to become a better teacher, how to engage our students. If you go to a good corporate company,
company that does training, they're learning how to engage their employees in the training instead of just making it a mandated thing that people are disengaged. We want engagement and engagement requires us to make an emotional connection. That's okay. Use things that entice, like I wanna find out what they're talking about. Oh, that's a good question. I'm gonna click and see if I can find the answer. That's part of engaging your community. I shared this on how I got monetized in just six weeks. You can see that video right here or check out the link below. But you need to be consistent. If you wanna grow your channel fast, you have to be more consistent. And what I mean by that is, instead of being consistent once a week, you need to be consistent daily or multiple times a day. It can be tough. It depends on how bad you want it. How bad do you want to grow your channel? Doesn't mean you have to do that forever. I began very rapidly. I've made a lot of changes. I'm on a schedule now and I stick to my schedule. And as I build my community, I will engage with them and find out what frequency do they want to hear short videos? What frequency do they want to hear educational videos? How often do they want a motivational quote or a motivational video? I want to learn what you want. Throw me a comment below. What is it that would drive you to want more information on a particular topic? What topics would you like to learn about toward your financial freedom? Throw that comment below as well. I want to engage my community to be able to help them learn the things they want to learn. Sometimes people don't even know what it is they need to learn. So we throw out content and then people watch it and go, wow, I didn't know that. I'm glad I learned that and you engage them that way. And once you have an audience and a community, you can begin to inquire, what is it they want to know more about? Maybe they just want to touch the surface on this subject, but they want to deep dive another subject, get their feedback, and then provide them what they want. Remember, you created YouTube channels for a reason. Yes, you have a passion about whatever it is you're teaching or talking about, but you also have an audience you want to reach. My why is I want to help others be inspired toward financial freedom, but that doesn't mean Mean they have to do it the way I do or the way I think is best. I'll give you my advice and the best knowledge I have, but bottom line is you're going to have to determine what method will work for you. So learning your audience and engaging with them helps drive your content. Stay with your niche. Don't let them take you to something that you're not interested in. I don't want to do videos on pranks. I love a good prank and I'll watch a good prank video, but I don't want to do videos on pranks. That's okay. But if you want to grow your YouTube channel, you need to learn your audience and provide them what they are looking for. And you need to do that on a regular schedule, consistent, because your audience, your group, your community is not going to stick around if you only upload a video every couple months or three this week and none for the next three months. You need to have a consistency. Even if it's only once a month, you'll grow slower, but be consistent until you can have time to become more frequent with your consistency. But once a month is better than 12 in one month and then none for 11 months be consistent and then try to become more frequent to where you can do at least one a week. If you can't, that's okay. Even if you do two a month, make it consistent the second and fourth Monday of every month or whatever works for your schedule and feed your audience and feed your community what they want and build your frequency. The fourth key to my success to getting from zero to 30,000 subscribers in six weeks has been studying and learning my video content as well as the retention on each video. Every video is different. In the videos you think, oh, this is one, this is gonna be great, it's gonna go viral, this is what people are gonna watch, they're gonna watch the whole thing, I'm gonna have a 100 plus percent retention on this video, post it, maybe you get a great thumbnail and you get 60% click-through rate, and then you get about a 3% retention well, there's something wrong with the intro in the hook that's not keeping people watching. You got them in there, but you're not keeping them. So you have to study that. I studied one video I have a lot because it has 160% retention, which means that people are watching the entire video one and a half plus times, which is great retention. So I'm trying to analyze that, what works, and I'm looking at that compared to some of my lower performing videos to see what was it about those that is different. And I'm also looking at the content throughout as well as the beginning, first impression, thumbnail, title, and everything in between. You have to analyze and you have to make improvements, but watch what your length and retention of those are. Now, obviously my shorts videos get better retention because they're 60 seconds or less. It's easier to get 50% retention on a 20 second video. 
I'm trying to strive for 100 plus percent on the shorts because it's so intriguing that people want to watch it again or it's so insightful or inspiring. That's how you get higher retention. So I'm learning and I'm making improvements. From the first video to the 150th video I just posted on week seven, I've made vast improvements in many ways. Some things I haven't and I still got a long ways to go. But I've put 150 videos on YouTube in seven weeks. That has been part of my success. I have worked like a dog. I have worked this over full time, but I want to. I'm not being forced to. I wanted to launch this and get it off the ground and then work it into a frequency that is beneficial for me and my family. It's been a fun, exciting, insightful journey for me over the last seven weeks, but I've gone from zero subscribers to over 30,000 in those seven weeks because I have put in the effort, I've put in the time. And the effort isn't what people think. It's not this upfront constantly. Everyone thinks, oh, I'm gonna start YouTube. I got a camera, I got some lights, I'm good to go. There's so much that goes into it. I have a video coming out, what it takes to create a YouTube channel versus my favorite passive income strategy. Check that one out. The fifth key of my success of going from zero subscribers to over 30,000 in seven weeks has been constantly learning. I've had to learn how to edit. I've had to learn how to create. I've had to learn how to become better at creating titles and thumbnails and text on thumbnails and better at speaking. And I'm still working on that. I keep catching myself looking at the screen instead of the camera. So it looks like I'm looking off to the side because I'm watching myself make this video instead of learning and watching the camera. And that's something I'll continue to get better at. So it gives that feeling that you want of me talking to you and not looking like I'm looking off to the side. But it's little things like that that I'm learning and making improvements and being more consistent with. But that's a lot of what people think about. But you have to get Get your video optimized. You need to learn keyword studies and keyword optimization and how to use tags, how to write descriptions on your videos. There's a lot that goes into this behind the scenes. I've spent a lot of time behind the scenes building the foundation for which the videos can now be presented. And I only look forward to greater improvement as those search engine optimizations begin to take place and work their magic. And that can take time. That can take three, six, 12 months for those optimizations to kick in. Because you have more videos for YouTube to decide, hey, we've learned what this content is and who likes this. We're gonna push this to these people. That's what YouTube's all about. They're trying to find the right video for the right people at the right time. And that takes them time to learn what your content is and what audience likes your stuff. So be patient, it can take time. And if you're only posting one video a month, it's gonna take a little longer time for YouTube to see what it is you're doing, who likes it, and to get it to them. I'm just starting to see that tick of exponential growth. And I'm excited to see it continue as YouTube's learning me and the audience that likes me. And now the game-changing tip I promised you. Focus on creating evergreen content. By creating videos that remain relevant and valuable over time, you'll continue to attract new viewers and subscribers long after you've uploaded the video. Most videos have a quick surge and then it takes some time for them to find their footing on the search engine optimization. That's okay, that takes time. But it, if you have a video that is only temporary, it'll lose traction and never produce long term. For example, a video about the top 10 fidget spinner tricks may have taken off at one time, but now it's no longer relevant or valuable. There's lots of videos like that. They go viral, they go crazy viral, but then they flatline and die. That's not evergreen. That is driven by society and culture and popularity. And they're usually short lived. Focus on making evergreen content. Whatever your niche is, find an element of that that is ongoing value and relevancy to your audience and to the general population. For example, 10 timeless tips for saving money is very evergreen. People are always going to look for tips on ways to save money. So creating titles and content that are evergreen can continue to create opportunity down the road. And that's how your YouTube can turn into a passive income stream. The work I did seven weeks ago is continuing to gain momentum now. I'm beginning to see more and more payoff from the past work than I am the present work. And that's the value of Evergreen. The longer time goes, the more all the work behind me is coming along providing passive income. So find a niche that isn't just about popular culture that is fleeting 
and find something that is evergreen that can provide you ongoing opportunity. Thank you for joining Simply Money. If you found this video valuable, go ahead and hit the subscribe and like button. Share this with somebody you know who's looking to start a YouTube channel that could be helped by this. And like always, please comment. Let me know what you think. Give me your thoughts and feedback ask questions, or give me suggestions on something you want to hear about, and I'll do my best to provide that for the community that we're building. Thank you for joining me, and we'll see you next time on Simply Money.